Hello, my name is Adam Winrich, 32-time Guinness World Record holder for whip cracking, and I'm here with Nick Schrader. Hello, everybody. Nick of Nick's Whip Shop. I'm sure all of you know who this guy is. So today we spent some time making what we are calling the Bare Bones Bull Whip. I came up with a design and I made it. Nick filmed me. So now Nick's going to go home and in a couple weeks the tutorial to make this whip should be on his channel. And the goal with this Bare Bones Whip was to try to create a very simple paracord design that any beginning whip maker could attempt. So we took out a lot of the steps that are commonly used in paracord bull whip designs. So with this design, there is no waxing, no Turks heads, no decoring of the strands, no electrical tape, no braided belly. I think that's about it. And we're calling it the bare bones whip. And uh, even to cut out the Turks head, we just made sure that the finished diameter is about seven eighths of an inch and a uh, chair tip, rubber chair tip fits nicely on there. We just epoxy it on the end. And so I thought, be interesting just to make this video uh, to talk a little bit about the two that we made. So I made this one yesterday to just make sure the design would work and I finished it and I was like this is great and I was like perfect I don't have to change anything the only thing I want to change was the handle so I'll tell you a little bit about this one and then the one we actually did in the tutorial and what the differences are and then Nick can talk a little bit about sure. them. So we made this one yesterday and basically the the core is four foot long and the handle is a 10 inch piece of 5 16 inch steel. And then when I crack it, I was like, ooh, this rolls out real nice. You should see that like, that's a nice tight loop comes off that whip. But I was like, ah, uh, for multiple cracking, I think I would like a lighter, slightly longer handle. So we went shopping over to Menards, because right now we are in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. And uh, we uh, bought some sort of marking rods for driveways. And that is also 5 16 of an inch. So this handle, a little bit of flex to it is 12 inches of fiberglass and then we got them done or we got this one done and then cracked it and i was like wait a minute this one doesn't crack as good as that one yeah something what different do, what yeah. do we do so the main difference is that we were able to fix right away after we finished the tutorial is this one actually has a dyneema cracker twisted of, out of four strands of dyneema bowstring and with this one in the tutorial we actually put on a artificial sinew cracker because we were trying to sort of limit the number of materials in the whip. So it's only fiberglass, paracord, artificial sinew, the chair tip and epoxy, and that's it. And I thought instead of saying like, well, you also gotta go spend about $30 on a spool of Dyneema to make a cracker for the whip. No, we're not gonna do that. So we just use artificial sinew. And then I cracked it and like, this doesn't crack as good as the other one. Right. So then we, of course, uh, altered it a little bit, put a shorter, shortened this fall a little bit to match that one. And then we put on the Dyneema cracker to match this one. Same and length. Same length. And then what we noticed, and maybe some of you paracord whip makers out there will know this already, that different colors of paracord seem to have different weights. So you can see we put a lot of uh, neons in this whip and it's just this color because I was trying to use up scraps of stuff that I had and Nick had that we didn't care about. So I've had about 100 feet of neon orange paracord I wasn't gonna use. Nick brought some yellow. And it turns out the neon orange and the yellow are both a heavier weight than the black and the white that we put in this one. So, not, so this whip is heavier, not only because it's got steel in the handle, but it's also heavier and got more oomph because of the colors of paracord that we picked. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm happy enough with the version that is in the tutorial, though I think if I had to make it again, I'd probably make sure to pick colors that are heavier. Right. This is a really neat build, Adam, because I've had a lot of people ask me over the years, you know, why don't you take the strands out? Have you ever taken the strands out? And up until this build, it would always be no, it lay flatter, you know, of course, making a whip that has like a weighted core, multiple bellies gives it that extra weight. But we have all the strands inside these cores and it looks quite a bit different. But because there, you know, there's no gaps in the plaiting, I think it works out really good and makes for a nice quick build. Nice quick build. Yeah. So it only took me uh, each one took me, about, took me about two hours. So if you're not an experienced braider, it may take you a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you think, Nick, about braiding from the point and then how I ended the handle so you end up nice and square with something bound off that with the cap? I on. like it a lot. You know, there's there's been a lot of videos that you've seen on my channel where I'll just continue plaiting. Like, for example, if I have a 19 inch handle that I want, I'll make it 20 and then just end up cutting the paracord and lopping off the end of that handle. And I think this is just a much more efficient way to do it uh, as you're gonna see Adam do it in the upcoming video where you tie off the strands and it's very neat. Of course, you do cut it in the end, but that handle itself doesn't is, is untouched. So that's something nice about that process. 
I guess a real quick explanation and what I was doing it for this tutorial, like maybe this is too hard for beginners. Mm -hmm. So you, you braid on down and you're braiding down the handle this way. Um, and then I basically just on the front of it, keep braiding till my sort of crossover strands are just past the end of the handle. And then I tie them together with a square knot and then I flip it over and then I start braiding the back, down, down, down. So those strands are just off the end of the handle, tie them together in a knot. And then most of my braiding is off the handle and then bind, bind, bind and I can bind right to the end of the handle, pull those strands tight, mm -hmm. tighten up my binding, then cut it off, fuse it, and it's done. And hopefully people don't have too much trouble with it, but then you never know. After you put in, put the tutorial online, then only then will you find out what problems people yeah. are gonna have. Because we try to come up with something simple, and maybe it's not as simple as I thought. Yeah, I filmed it as best I could with all those angles, so hopefully you guys can see every step. And to finish this here, I'm gonna crack these. Here, you crack both of them, Nick. All right. And then I'll crack both of them, just so people can see how they work. Good job, Nick. Certainly loud. Here, I'll do. There's a little basic full width cracking. Here's some basic cracks you'd start out with. My workout for the evening. Whew. Yeah, my name is Adam Winrich, Nick Schrader. Thanks for watching.